Yo, check it out, y'all. What's the deal? It's the chef right here. We doing it big with my man, Ill Will, one of the illest, the illest, illest journalists I know representing the UK. Hold them down. You know what to do. The chef. Peace. decided to call my album that because that was the frame of mind that I am, that I'm in today. You know, I feel fly. You know, I always been fly. I'm an international artist. You know, a luxurious artist what I've been making for years. You know, my art is expensive. You know, it's because my mind is rich. You know, it's rich with thoughts and I'm always trying to step the bar up in, in, in many ways just to prove to me not to prove to y'all right away but to prove to me and I think being in the business for 20 years has allowed me to become a better MC become a better businessman become a better brand and um, I'm at my best right now you know so the, the title was just perfect for where I wanted to be at today you know it's like you get a new a new Raekwon all over again Okay. You know, and um, I just felt like this title reflected where I was at. Okay. You know, on wax. You know, um, I've been doing it for a long time, and I think I got my weight back up after I've done the purple tape, Cuban Links Part Two. You know, because that was a lot of pressure for me. Um, trying to do a sequel and really come back and, and hit him in the head. It was a challenge for me, and I guess. When I succeeded on, on winning that challenge, it motivated me more to step back in the game and, and, and really go hard. And um, that's what I've just been doing. And um, I've been dropping projects and staying on top of the feature games with with friends that call me peers. You know, because a lot of guys call me to do work with them. You know, the young, the the, the OGs. You know, and I like to constantly throw music out. Just so people could just see that I'm still out there doing my thing, you know. Now, I mean, you did just mention that you, you like to work with some of the new new artists uh, coming up. I actually did a little bit of research before I came in about uh, about the opinions of Fila, um, and what the anticipation was for it. Mm -hmm. And having scoured boards, you know, there was a lot of feedback uh, where mm -hmm. some of your loyal fans were a bit concerned because you had records with like French Montana, and and a lot of the beats of the stuff you've pre-released already might have had that trap sound or it might have been like you were going for a new demographic so I wanted to know your opinion on that and if that's true because obviously the album isn't out yet so were they maybe teasers for something that isn't going to be on the album like I mean whatever you heard before actually you had the album is me just basically serving wreck I'm just getting wreck I'm just letting you know that I'm in a zone still you know um, I think it's important that people fill me out first before they actually get to get what I give them. You know, and um, I've dropped multiple records. You know, I even went on a, a journey with 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 um with some soulful records that I did for fun. Yeah. You know, I did a mixtape, we wanna thank you. Um, yeah, it's you know, dope. I was just I was just having fun. Thank I you. love the Carl Thomas joint. Thank you, thank you. You know, um it was just me really just going back in and just really toning my toning my shit up, you know, to get prepared for the big the big one, which is this album. Uh -huh. And um you know, I think practice makes perfect, you know. I think when you passionate about what you love to do and you doing it at a constant level, you can only get better. You know, but um for me, you know, um yeah, you have to grow, you know, you have to grow with the times. And I think that that's what I was doing with the music. You know, um, I have a lot of friends in the business as well. You know, from the OGs to the to the new Gs uh -huh. that really look up to me and they really respect when I when I get on the mic with them. Or they respect when I do my thing. So I'm just I'm just back in artist mode, and and, and now you get a, a, a fresher Raekwon. 
Yeah. So is it is it directed at a newer fan base or are your uh, loyal it's fans going to be happy? I mean, oh, of course, you know, everybody, you know, everybody's going to be happy at the end of the day, you know, because it's not a bullshit album. Mm -hmm. You know, this is an album that you can listen to from beginning to end and you don't have to touch it. Okay. You know, one thing about the chef, I think the world knows is I make great albums. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying it from a cocky level. I think it's just it just make it's just one plus one. Right. You know, and um, when you get this album, of course, I had to do a couple of things to uplift my my um my my tapestry. I had to uplift it and and still be me. So you're gonna always still get Ray on the album, but Ray has a ball that he has to go, that he has to keep stepping up to, you okay. know, and, and like I said, I'm a passionate artist, when I when I make music, I'm not just rushing to just give you something, uh -huh. you know, I've been working on this project for like the last last two years, close to two years, and um, you know, I'm, I'm happy with it, you know, I'm happy with it, you know, I have, I have a lot of um, critical people around me, friends, that are uh, honest with me about the direction that I'm taking and you know the heights that I'm trying to climb like you know I never do things on my own okay you know of course I have the last opinion the last say so you know but I'm constantly looking at my team you know shout out Ice H2O which is my team um and we're having discussions about growth about how do you still be who you are but still be a better you and take it to another level mm -hmm to get people excited again. And um, you know, that right there is something that I really study. Okay. You know, I study to be to, to make make that make a great great album happen. Well now while you've got feeler drop in, have you totally abandoned the idea of Cuban Links three? No, I didn't I didn't abandon it. I mean it's just right now I'm in I'm in feeler mode. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm in you know, I think that this album is another direction that I wanted to challenge with this record. You know, and um, of course, you know, Cuban Links 3, I know a lot of people want that, but it has to, it has to come organically when, when the time is right. Okay. You know, um, of course for me, you know, I think it's so important as an artist to do different things. Don't be like everybody else. Right. You know, try things, you know. Um, and I guess that's why I'm a chef, because I'm always going to try to serve you a different <laughs> dish. You know, you might love my turkey burgers, but yo, eat this fucking salmon. Right. You know what I mean? Try this shit, because this, this is healthy too. You know what I mean? So I'm always challenging myself when it comes to that. But, um, you know, of course people want that. And, you know, it's just something that's in the, in the back of my mind that I know that, you know, that's something I might have to do soon but it has to come organically like everything else. Okay, and speaking of um, being organic, um, you've been working a lot with uh, Jerry Wonder, am I correct in saying? Now, obviously, Jerry Wonder is renowned for his work with the Fugees, and then he's produced with a lot of other people more recently, Miguel, uh, he did uh, that dope joint with Mary, Diddy, and Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. um, how's the chemistry of you two? Because it seems like his past input, our output, excuse me, is completely different to what you're renowned for. So how has that come together? It was a it was a great collaboration when we when we got together. You know, he taught me things about sonics and music and you know and and, and, and I showed him things about me, about how being a great MC and being able to, you know, handle these production handle this production that he's bringing to the table. Um, he's a good friend of mine and you know, like I said, you know, when I think about his history he come from something great as well too. And you know, now you got two great men in the room that basically he does production and I and I do the writing factor and we just created. We we created and um he delivered enormously on this album, you know. He brought stuff to the table that that I was like, wow, like I love it. You know what I mean? Like I don't just like it. You know, one thing about me, I'm so critical of my music that I have to love it. We just, we just made history to go. Okay. Um, I don't want to get too much into uh, the Wu-Tang and the Wu-Tang album, but I did want to ask you, um, I actually saw on Rap Radar that they put that the Wu-Tang album, the new one, 
was the second worst album of last year behind Iggy Azalea and I thought that was really really harsh but I understand that you have your own opinions on the album and I just wondered in hindsight what your opinion was of you know the album being rushed maybe or I mean you know it, you know it, it's no mystery that I, I wasn't in love with it you know um, I felt like it could have been better I felt like the Wu deserved the uh, opportunity to have a better better production you know that's not no mystery you know but um at the time Riz is the boss and you know at the time of making that album collectively um I wasn't the only one that had a feeling about it you know a couple of us felt the same way but you know it's just sometimes we go through that as men you know what I mean and um for me I would have preferred to go in a different direction you know and um RZA, he wanted to go in this direction, you know. That's why he named the album A Better Tomorrow. Like, we didn't have anything to do with that. That was his call. Uh -huh. You know, so my thing is, when I go back and I think about how we, how we started to make successful records back in the early 90s, we always was, was cohesive with, with the mind. We all used our mind. We all, we all agreed to uh -huh. agree or agree to disagree or whatever the case may be. But in this situation it was more like a a RZA's call and um you know we wasn't happy, you know what I mean? And the final results of the project I wasn't impressed. Uh -huh. You know, but I wasn't I wasn't shooting it down. You didn't hear me talking no shit about it. You know what I mean? I just got in line and and kept saying, yo, you sure? You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I didn't want to go back into a drama thing with my mm -hmm. brother, you know? That's one thing that I'm not into is just trying to batter who he is because he's still a great a great producer, you know? But RZA, he just wanted to come across another way. He wanted a, a positive insight with this album and, and show the world something else, mm -hmm. you know? And um, I had no problem with that, but when you start straying away from the sound too much, that's when it becomes a problem. And Wu Tang, we have this this level of respect that people want what they want out of us. Mm -hmm. you know, they want energy. They want they want they want music that they know only us could do. Right. And they just didn't feel that they was getting that on that. And it took the fans to say something about it more than I had to say anything. But you know, like I said, you know, it is what it is. Um. You know, at the end of the day, the woo is still a shit, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of what, you know, it's just, you know, like I always tell anybody, an MC's worst, worst thing is just to not have the proper production that he needs to, of course, to, to win, you know. This week, uh, there was an unreleased Death Row album from The Outlaws that came out, I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> um, but I was listening to it and it is and it is from the 90s it's from when they were at Death Row and they were with Park and it's all original material and it made me think of the One Nation project that Park was looking to put together with a lot of uh, guys from all over America mm -hmm. and I know that he fucked with the woo heavily um, and I just wondered if you because um, you talked in your Sway interview recently about Biggie and the Biggie diss on the purple tape so I just wondered if you talk about Puck, like maybe a story you have with him in the studio or if you, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And if you guys were actually going to do anything on the One Nation project. Um, you know, it's so crazy. I, I, the only time I met Pop, I met him one time. And it was basically at the Source Awards back in, um, back in I think, 95 or something, whenever the first Source Awards was. And um, we, never, we never sat down and talked. You know, we seen each other on the walkthrough, and he acknowledged me, I acknowledged him, and we kept going where we was going. You know, maybe he was coming down the stairs and I was coming up the stairs. Right. But, um, of course, I respect him. You know, I think he's a dope lyricist, and, you know, he's definitely a revolutionary, you know, a revolutionary guy, you know, but um, I never had the opportunity to work with him, and um, I would have loved to work with Pop. You know, I respect what he was doing. You know, I loved him as an actor. And more importantly, you know, the guy was really, really a lyric head, you know. Mm -hmm. He was definitely deep into his um his zone. Right. And what I learned what I learned to love about him is that 
he was a hard worker, you know. Um, he was passionate about what he done, you know. And um, I wish I did have an opportunity to work with him because we probably would have made something so crazy, you know. But I just ain't get it. I just ain't get enough time to be able to get to him to, to make that happen. But um, yeah, I look at I look at Pac as one of our kings in the music business, and you know, definitely as an artist.